Let the Eurovision Song Contest begin! Hello, welcome back to the Juice Pie Podcast. Woo woo! Hi, Liz. And a Bulgaria to you too. That doesn't work. Wow. It sounded that better in didn't my head. Work at all. <laughs> but we're keeping it in. <laughs> I have a I have a bulg for Bulgaria. Woo woo! More like Bulgaria, am I right? That's you. <laughs> I hate everything about this podcast so much, but I don't hate Bulgaria. I'm a big fan of Bulgaria. So Yeah, I um, guess it's a harsh statement about Bulgaria. No, it's just recording with you is what I hate. <laughs> ah, well, look, that's fair. That's fair. I get that. I get that. So it is Bulgaria week. We are finally going, we've gotten through the bees. We're almost up to the seas. I think this is our last stop in the world of bees. Is it? Oh, every time you say that, it's always completely wrong and we offend yeah, somebody. Yeah, I know. And I've missed like Bhutan yeah. or Bangladesh who were very long <laughs> in entrance of the Eurovision Song Contest. I always feel ah. terrible. You always like forget somebody and like the entire like 60 million people of its country. <laughs> when we get up to it, I will forget Germany exists. Like that's like a guarantee. <laughs> I can almost guarantee. Yeah. I'll be like, well, there are no G's. Time to keep going. So it is Bulgaria week. We're finally there. Um, welcome. Liz, what do you know about Bulgaria? Oh, I am bulging for Bulgaria. <laughs> I'm stealing you, your bold joke. You, yeah, I know. Re recycle, reuse, save the environment. Bulgaria, capital, Sofia, I believe. I don't know how many people live there. I don't know what they do in Bulgaria. I know they go to Eurovision every year. I was going to say every four years. That's the Olympics. I'm not off to a great start <laughs> tonight. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Thank Lord I'm already drinking. Oh, I don't normally God. drink, but I'm drinking this podcast. I can understand. I... With a producer like we've it's... got. Oh, good God. Oh, <laughs> you mean with the talent that he has to put up yeah. with? Oh! <laughs> I'd be clawing oh, the walls my. as well. So Bulgaria debuted at the Eurovision Song Contest in 2005. They've been to 12 contests. Can I say that seems like a late debut? Why was it 2005? It Were they part of somebody before? I That's, don't know. That seems Bulgaria's, how a lot of this Bulgaria has been Bulgaria for a very, very, very long time now. So, so why the why the wait till two thousand and five? It's interesting, isn't it? Because oh. I mean, what the Bulg the former Yugoslav countries all went in the early nineties. Romania has mm. been there for a long time. Um, mm. It just seemed Greece has been there for, since time immemorial almost. So it's weird mm -hmm. that it took Bulgaria. Well, didn't so the much Greeks time. invent time? Technically, didn't the <laughs> Greeks invent time? Um, <laughs> How did you know what time your appointment was before the Greeks came around? Honestly, you just kept showing up at the podiatrist. Yeah, yeah. That's why we're all like living in huts because, exactly. you know, nobody knew when the, the plumbers were coming. <laughs> um, oh my God. You know what? I just feel that like there are the people of Bulgaria are sitting at home just like yelling at their earpieces right now going, oh, why don't you realize why we weren't there? Well, and we'll we Google apologize it. for not knowing. We're so sorry, but let's pretend <laughs> we do know. Because of the thing, right? Yeah, that thing in Bulgaria. Oh, that... yes. And that was a Stop terrible, them. tragic Or thing. a really terrific thing. If... Or possibly awesome. Yes. Or, but yeah. <laughs> but they're here now. We have Bulgaria. Woo! We've won them over. They debuted in 2005. They have entered 12 contests, but they've only nice. qualified for four finals. Oh. The important thing, though... So they tried. Well, of those four times they've qualified for the final, three of them mm. have landed in the mm. top five. So when they make the final, Ooh. they mean business. Yeah. When they actually, like, commit, they they get it done. They get there. They finished second once as well, but we'll get to that one. We have to start with 2005, which was the band Cafe with the song Lorraine, and it did not qualify. <sighs> Oh my god, I'm crossing my eyes as I almost pass out into my chair. <laughs> the only way that I can describe Lorraine, I was just looking at it. Okay, to give you a sort of a feel or a vibe for this song, it's a lot of, I miss Lorraine in the rain, 
and Lorraine, you give me pain. And Lorraine, yeah. I have a stain. <laughs> it, is, it is soft jazz by white guys. And yeah. basically, this is the whitest thing I have ever seen in my life. Without a doubt. This is so vanilla, you will catch diabetes. It is so... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it, it reminds me of that, you know, in My Fair Lady, where they tried to make um, Audrey a lady, and they're all like, she has to do that. The rain in Spain falls mainly on the plain. Now imagine six like middle class white dudes doing a soft jazz version <laughs> of that song. That's how I describe it. Yeah, I feel like Lorraine may be about to get a restraint against the entire band. <laughs> um, and appropriately it's so. You know what you know what freaked me out though? I was looking into, you know, the history of the band because I was like, oh, there's gotta be some like dodgy C D pass. Oh my god. No, it turns out they were one of the most popular bands in Bulgaria, being crowned band of the year in 2004 so the year before this contest so i don't know what happened between 2004 and 2005 or they were the only band in, <laughs> in bulgaria, bulgaria in 2004 yeah. it's entirely possible i i think this is a very sexy song ruined by a terrible song terrible <laughs> lyrics terrible singers um just terrible everything <laughs> if it was anything else it would have worked yeah but it wasn't it was this and it didn't work so no <laughs> yeah i'm not a fan no. you know you know me what's the one thing i always say men shouldn't be doing falsetto i hate male falsetto <laughs> and fucking cafe delivered male falsetto big points yeah. off that's one thing you should never deliver on i've written this is a bit cringy but i feel like i'm understating oh. it <laughs> Oh, I this, oh, oh, you know what? It's like when I, I honestly, like I watch this performance and I want to apologize to every other nationality and race on the planet um, on behalf of white people. I am sorry for what we have given you. This is, <laughs> I feel like we've done so much in history. We should be apologizing for that. Bulgaria's Eurovision entry is not up the top of that list. Oh, look, I... <laughs> look no, well, but we're apologizing. it is on the list. It yeah. is on the list. Yeah. We should just get it all out. And, and, and there's Daz Samson yeah. and then there is uh, Lorraine in the rain. It's giving her a pain. That's why she has a stain. She can't sustain. Get the restrain. Oh. <laughs> there you are. Oh my God. Did we just like sing the entire song just then? I, I think, think we, we actually scored more points. Um, <laughs> fashion is hideous. Look, I actually don't oh. fully hate the song. I like it for its cringe what? value. Song no. has gotten a four from me. Performance oh. of two and a fashion of one no. for a total of seven. Wow. Okay. Um, I approach this differently. I gave this zeros across the board wow i would not save one piece of this if this if this was on the titanic i would be kicking more holes in the boat to make it go down quicker <laughs> this song is awful all right well we need to move on to 2006 mariana popova with let me cry another non-qualifier um, this one is about Mariana discovering her lover is unfaithful and she would rather cry than receive his comfort. Yeah, you go, girl. Why are they all wearing shower curtains? Well, cause, you know what? There is nothing. You know what? Sometimes it's just good to have a good cry in the shower. And I That's think true. this is what that song, like, we've all cried from a broken heart in a shower. And I time. think they have really, really captured that moment. You know, yeah. just that... <laughs> Uh, that's that's what this performance is a visual representation of it's not i it's a, it's a fairly uneventful song it's it's kind of trying to be a power ballad but it's kind of not strong enough to be a power ballad if that makes sense yeah yeah i mean it's like the actual like there's actual parts of the like the actual song i mean i don't mind it's okay they try to throw like a bit of like traditional what like power singing in like i dig it so yeah I, i'm with you there's no wow factor nothing excites me about this but that being said i do not even the bleach blonde man in a skirt 
warbling oh, no, in the corner. Oh, no, that is my favourite part. That is my favourite part. Like, he, uh, pretty much, he is, like, he's the main reason for most of my points. He makes the I think the he's fabulous. Right? Agreed. I think they should have put him front and centre. Agreed. Quite frankly. Yeah. Oh, he is a lot more interesting and should be getting a lot more screen time. Um, look, I gave the song a four. I actually give the performance five because they were, f- you know, flapping their shower curtains about. And like I said, that back up, like, oh my God, amazing. And I give the fashion a five just like for his, like, eye makeup alone. Like his eyelashes, stellar. St- out them. of this world right i've given the yeah. song a four like you nothing much to write home about performance i've given a six but fashion for okay. me is a one for a total of 11 oh. yeah I, I can't even be angry with you for like seeing that like i totally get uh while you're doing that are you implying you often get angry at me for my scores <laughs> yes all the time all We're... the time and i'm just like what are you thinking but I, you know i can see where you're coming from we are in very ineffective couples therapy. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're building bridges, all right? We are building bridges. <laughs> they told you to stop talking in Eurovision slogans. We need to work on us, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> stop repressing my confluence of sound. <laughs> 2007 was Elitza Todorova and Stoyan Yanklov with the song Water, and this one finished fifth in the final their first top five um it's a song about a young girl meeting a young boy on a horse i don't know which one of them's on a horse but just grammatically that confused me i assume he's on the horse well that's a bit sexist why do you assume he's on the horse she well, could be a power of... bitch she's riding like on her way to look at like all of her like multiple like farms and properties that she owns because she is a bitch and she got it going together okay he is some lonely unemployed bum in the street sexist that's what i agree that's yeah i'm happy to interpret it that way i don't speak bulgarian Mm. so i have no idea what the truth is yeah i think even i I think even if you do speak bulgarian it won't matter because a lot (laughs) of the lyrics are so this one is very um what's the word different unique Mm -hmm. Uh, quirky uh, quirky that's such a good word that's what i think the word quirky was invented for this performance i honestly it really was i mean i i I love it i mean it's just what you want at eurovision i mean it's it's catchy it's quirky it's modern it has traditional flair um and what we have oh my god we have to actually give props um for the two performers because there is a multitude of drums on stage and they are just playing the shit out of them. <laughs> I love that. I love a bit of, and like, they are actually like playing stuff. Like this is not someone, you know, awkwardly, badly playing and, you know, undersized mini guitar. They're also like, not only are they playing all the drums, at one point yeah. he starts vocalizing the sound of a drum. Like, yeah. dude, you have a drum. <laughs> like <laughs> you, you are adding extra steps to this process. <laughs> Yeah, but it's like a um, baka, 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 um, baka, baka, baka. can you get that from a drum? It's not the same. We won't find out unless he tries. Um, baka, 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 um, baka, baka, baka. If you hit a middle aged man like hard enough, that is the sound that they make. Um, baka, 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 um, baka, baka, baka. <laughs> yeah, no, it is different, but it it definitely appeals to someone. It has to have coming fifth, but like I've said about a yeah. couple of songs, it's not me that it's appealing to. I absolutely hate her vocals. I find them <laughs> strained in pitch yeah. almost and i don't know if that's her style i mean it clearly is her style I think that's her style she, yeah yeah she came back a few years later and did it again but yeah it did i don't know i like the track i don't think i like the song oh i like the song i think it's got See, that it's got that catchy like rhythmic kind of i mean i i find with this like the performance is all over the place but it's passionate and I think that's what people like were responding to. I mean, the the staging is shit, but the talent is raw. <laughs> All right, interesting. We're going to have to disagree on this one. I reckon I've only given the song a four, but the performance oh. is seven. A lot of drumming going on there. Fashion a four for a total of fifteen. Yeah. See, I actually gave the song an eight. Shit. I think they're really onto something. I I still remember, like I still listen to this song because I just find it catchy. Um, I give the performance seven i think the staging is terrible but like i said i just love the passion um i give the fashion a three um 
Yeah, I've got to say, what I have found watching um, a lot of the acts from Bulgaria, and we'll see it coming up, the thing that routinely lets Bulgaria down um, is their staging. That's what I find. Yeah, I think I think that's going to be a common thread that we find throughout this episode. 2008, Deep Zone and Balthazar, DJ Take Me Away. This one did not qualify, but it did come 11th in the semi-final. What did you think about this one? <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord oh my lord there is so much to unpack with this one um look i've got to be honest the song itself not the live version but the recorded version i actually really like the oh, song no i was itself. so worried you were gonna say that no it's it's fun i love it but Oh my god! Okay, the the staging of this. Oh my lord! It is spectacular. You have to watch it. The staging. I mean, it's all over the place. But it, it starts with a guy in sweatpants break dancing, whilst two drunk uncles pretend to scratch in the corner, and then, I swear to God, William Shatner comes out with a guitar. <laughs> And then the female lead singer appears and for some reason she is dressed like an old Western saloon girl. Mm -hmm. Oh, small note, we should also mention that there is a scratching desk on stage and the turntables are literally on fire while yes, she sir. gives an awful, terrible vocal performance. It's yep. awful. This is a mess. Is so this whole thing is a mess. I give it points for ambition, but this whole thing is an absolute mess in a good yeah. way. Yeah. <laughs> this comes back to the ones that we were saying, like, uh, yeah, I'm so glad this is a part of Eurovision. There are train wrecks and then there are Eurovision train wrecks. You know what I mean? There are train wrecks where, oh God, the humanity, what a mess. And then there's, oh, hello, there's a fireworks and glitter train that's just exploded. And yep. everything is great. Yes. Yes, absolutely. You're just like, this is so awful. I cannot look away from it. Like, this yeah. is the most spectacular thing I've ever seen in my life. It's so awful. I think all of that is great. When you said they do some break dancing, I'm not sure that qualifies as break dancing. <laughs> I'm not completely convinced. <laughs> it's, it's interpretation of breakdancing. It, yeah. It takes one minute for the pace of this song to change, like, completely. So I like it in kind of like, I don't know. I don't know if I think it's a good train wreck. Parts of it are a good train wreck. I've given the song a one, performance a six, and the fashion a two for a total of nine. Oh, wow. Well, see, I, I give the song, uh, I actually gave the song uh, a five. I actually, I like the song. I think they could have done a lot better with it. Uh, the performance, just for bringing out William Shatner. Um, it's not William Shatner. God, I wish it was <laughs> William Shatner. Um, I actually give the performance four for setting your turntables on fire. Uh, the fashion, I just give a zero. It's such a train wreck. <laughs> Nothing makes sense, but my God, I love it. I would never vote for it, but I love it. Do you want to try a William Shatner impression? For this song dj uh, take me away did you take <laughs> me away from this immediately spark <laughs> oh, beautiful beautiful 2009 i love william shatner was krasimir avramov with the song illusion again did not qualify for the final what did you think about this one let's also mention it only made seven points what i can't figure out is how it made seven points. <laughs> this, oh my God, wh where to unpack this? Okay, it is three ladies and a gentleman, okay? Never since Cesar have Eurovision fans been so shocked by a note that this man <laughs> breaks into. Delivers, the yes. la there are three ladies, they have serious Elvira hair. Like, it is huge. I think it should actually count as another person. Um, whilst two people on stilts dance around them. It is like an F-grade fantasy film. Um, I have a feeling that Bulgaria thought this was a lot more fantastical yeah. and just majestic than it really was. And I'm just going to come right out and say it. I think this song truly has the worst notes in the history of eurovision wow that is a huge except for nikki from you, azerbaijan obviously i was gonna say you've 
heard the Eurovision Song Contest before, right? <laughs> yeah, this is this is second only to Nikki. Okay, beautiful. Well, poor Nikki. She's going to have to go into therapy if she's not already. <laughs> yeah, I thought this one was a bit of a wreck. Um, The stage is like, it's there's so much fire and yet there's not enough fire on yes. the stage, burning yes. down the stage. So I never yeah, have to setting look at this them on fire. Again. Just, I, just everything. Yeah. I've said it before. I've said it before on this episode and I'll say it before now. I hate male falsetto I <laughs> this is your it. worst nightmare this is I your worst hate. nightmare i do yeah. have to give points for doing the big swing on with stilts on like grabbing her by the yes. stilts and yes. spinning her around i have to give like a million points i just wish it was in a different performance because i yeah hate this do not bring a song like this and do not make <laughs> it last more than zero seconds i hate this in every way song zero Performance is three, not for anyone singing, just for the stilts, and the fashion is a zero <laughs> for a total of three. <laughs> oh my god, all I kept thinking is while watching this is, can you imagine if the person who created this had directed Lord of the Rings? Can you, <laughs> can you imagine? Just take a moment. Just how different that trilogy, well it wouldn't have been a trilogy, let's be honest. No. Um... <laughs> I I actually I gave the song um a two um far too generous. Yeah. I give the performance a zero. Um and simply because he has the audacity to wear a cape, I'm giving the fashion two. Bravo, man. Bravo How, for wearing you your gave, cape. You gave nothing for the stilts. Oh, I gave two points for the cape. What more do you want? I think four still points point, is so still generous. Still point, still point, still point, still <laughs> point. All right. Well, let's see if you if you were more generous to 2010. Miro with Angel City. You are an angel. Yet again, no qualification. They've made one qualification Aww. in something like seven attempts at this point. Mm. Now, first thing I noticed is how badly I want his jacket, but... I have to immediately point out, oh, look, another we're all wearing white angel motif in the Eurovision Song Contest. Brand new. Never seen that before. What? Fancy. <laughs> oh, I just threw my pen in rage. <laughs> yeah, I know. I saw it. I was like, oh, my Lord. Like, I feel like I'm overreacting. <laughs> for those who can't um, uh, remember the performance despite Jack's rage, um, this song starts uh, with Miro. He has two gorgeous backup dancers with flapping wings, flapping their wings all around him. And they flap them a while to reveal two shirtless and extremely oiled men kneeling before Miro. And you have to say, you have my attention. <laughs> Unfortunately... <laughs> Uh, it doesn't really go anywhere from there. Yes. Oh my God. I will say he looks like it is the Bulgarian version of eighties George Michael. No, come on. Yes. Totally. How much do you hate George Michael in the 80s? If that jacket was black instead of white, you'd be like, oh my God, that is George Michael in He's not faith. rocking the denim jeans though. That's very George Michael. No, but that kind of, he's got that, he's got the bleach blonde hair. Like I just see 80s like George Michael. The other thing that George I George will... Michael was never bleach blonde in the 80s. Yeah, he was. Well, he had no, the, you he know. he wasn't. Yeah. Well, no, he had like the tips. Oh, like the tippy that's blonde that's totally bits. different. Oh, I don't And care. I'm the one wearing glasses. This is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What, have you, what do you call them? Tips? Ice? Frosted ice tips? baby? I don't know. Those oh, things. It doesn't matter. Move on. Get back to the song. Oh, my God. Okay. Uh, one of the main lyrics to this song appears to be... Oh. Okay, cool. So we're on the same page with that. Hang on. Hang it's on. Oh. <laughs> Oh, oh, okay. We don't have four hours, Liz. Do you want me to do the next sentence? That's just no, like one no, sentence. It's fine. it's fine. Yeah. So it gets to this point where you think it's going to be the chorus and there's this big, you know, point to sing your song and make your mm. point. And I think it is the chorus, but he just sings, if you will, demonstrate for us. <coughs> Oh, 
and that's sort of it for the rest of the song it's yeah. just kind of bland i i wish i could rock that hair george michael or otherwise i um, wish you could watch you could rock that hair instead of this like you know mess it, i'm looking at oh, i'm sorry I've, I've just it's meant to go you've wavy, let yourself go happens. can i just say matter. in quarantine you have let yourself go oh i know you're looking i know you're looking at me like who can you judge but i have quarantine hair i don't care i've lived my life with quarantine hair <laughs> this is like this is the same haircut you're actually looking better in quarantine than you ever were yeah, before i have blossomed <laughs> in quarantine <laughs> you know i the other thing one of my personal mm. rules of eurovision is bring an unnecessary violin and i'll fall for it so mm -hmm. points to miro for this one it, this one's kind of parts of the song other than the chorus bit of a guilty pleasure for me i've given the song a three performance a four and before that jacket seven for the fashion for a total of 14. Oh. well can i also say if anyone in the world ever experiences an oil spill i think they should get these two young gentlemen in to just roll around and because apparently they will soak it all up um i gave the song a two i give the performance three and yeah fashion is six that's that's mainly for the oiled gentlemen i love oiled shirtless gentlemen at eurovision uh. You're only human. How can you resist? How I know. Resist? I I think there's not enough of it. To be honest, I think that's what in the disco by Dean that we reviewed last week was missing. Shirtless Are you oiled still men. going on about that? In the disco. That's no, what I want to see. We've it's moved on. You're not allowed to do it. But music's what I want. Music's what I need. Do you know what it was? It was me saying you couldn't do it that made you do it. I'm I I am the fool around here. It is the power of the disco. <laughs> 2011, Polly Genova with Na Inat, which means in spite. Devastatingly, another NQ for the final from Bulgaria. This one's a great song. I, 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 this didn't, well, this one didn't qualify, but Azerbaijan won. Like that doesn't sit right. Oh, with look, me. That's, that's, a, that's that's criminal. That's that's not the issue here. Like, I mean, yeah, <laughs> it would have been better than that. Anything would have been better than that. Mm. I just, I really love Polly's energy and her presence. I think she was a lot better than the song, mm -hmm. um, because as as we will see when she comes back later on with a better mm -hmm. song, she does better. So she's really got all the ingredients here. It's just making sure they're matched what? to the right entry. I think. Yeah. Well, she actually began her performing sort of career at the age of eight. Uh, she mm. was in a children's um, singing ensemble uh, called Bon Bon, which I think is the worst name for a children's act ever. Because um, a Bon Bon is something that you break open in Australia. So I think that's a terrible name <laughs> to call children. Um, oh, I can also give you a little bit of trivia. Um, oh, I do about love her. a bit of trivia. In, uh, in Bulgaria, she is the voice of Smurfette in the films The Smurfs no. 1 and 2. She is the Bulgarian Smurfette. That is so weird because I was thinking of the Smurfs today and I don't know why. And I haven't thought well, about I, the Smurfs in forever. Well, I don't know if you, I've ever thought you know about why. the Smurfs before now. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you know why. Subliminal product placement. Yeah. I, I will say... Uh, what I have noticed about this song is, you know me, I live for costume reveals at Eurovision. Mm -hmm. This, however, there is a costume reveal. It is the most least interesting costume reveal in the history of Eurovision. <laughs> Basically, she just rips off, like, a bit of white fabric to reveal, like, her ill-fitting white slip underneath. Yes. No, it just, it's just, it's just like, it's like, it's like ripping off Christmas paper to find a plastic bag underneath. I yeah, just, exactly. Was, you were just like, what was even the point of that? I don't understand. I, I found her toga dress with leggings to be simultaneously unexpected. And I'm kind of just, eh, whatever. Like, mm. you rocking it, whatever. Good for you. Um, this was a perfectly serviceable song to me. I think it should have qualified. I remember 2011, hey. there were a lot worse songs than this one. I given the song a six, performance a six. And fashion a six for a total of 18. Um, I actually, I'm giving the song a two. I'm giving <gasps> the performance what? a three. And I'm giving the fashion a two. I do not like this song at all. I found it dull. Well, yeah. each to their own, I guess. Yeah. Even if you are wrong. 2012, Sophie Marinova with Love Unlimited. Now, this one didn't qualify, 
but it scored the exact same number of points as mm. Norway did in the final of 2012 and had to do a count back, which Norway succeeded in. And that was the man my cat is named after, 2G, our executive oh. producer. Yeah, 2G was right to win. Uh, he also did this. end up coming last in the final. It's not the point. It's not <laughs> the point. <laughs> That's not the point. So, that was that we shall talk about that. To date, this is the mm-hmm. only Eurovision entry ever to have Azeri lyrics, despite the fact that Azerbaijan have been going for like thirty seven years now, eleven. But, you know, forever. They have only ever sent songs in English. Hang on. So what? Hang, what so hang on, Bulgaria is the only country to have sent a song with Azerbaijan lyrics. Yeah. Bulgaria. That is right. Yeah, Bo- um, in ah. the same year, Sweden won, but mm. Finland was the only country to send a song in Swedish, and they didn't qualify. It was a weird year for for words, I guess. Well, can I say when this song begins, my first instinct was, "Oh my lord, Sophia has just got her divorce through, and this cougar is in the <gasps> club, and she is on the prowl." Liz. <laughs> Liz, Liz, I've written plastered aunt at a party she wasn't invited to. <laughs> we are on the same page again. Can I say, I don't even want to talk about the song, to be honest. I want to talk about her um, her personal life for a moment. It is so much more interesting than this song. <laughs> this song to me is just generic forgettable. Oh my Lord. Do you want to know a little bit of gossy goss about Sophia? Uh, is the Pope Catholic? Of course, I want to know some gossip about Well, Sophia. this may make you question. No, I'm actually asking, is the Pope Catholic? I haven't kept up with it. <laughs> Be keeping up with events? Yeah. Is he Jewish these days? They are so not progressive. They're all Christian, Christian, Christian. It's not progressive. Um, mm, weird. Oh, my Lord. Okay. Now, firstly, I just want to say, like, she is an awesome person because uh, she has worked with a lot of charity groups um, on the subject to stop human trafficking. Um, from uh, the year 2008 onwards. In 2010, she was appointed the ambassador against poverty and social uh, isolation. Because uh, she said that's, some, that's something she experienced because she uh, was born in Romania where they have um, a, a problem with human trafficking of young girls. Um, so she has worked to put a stop to that. So we salute you. Now on another note, oh my Lord. Okay. No, you might need your pen and paper to stay with me on this one. Okay. Okay, hang on. I've got my... Okay, I'm ready. Okay. Walk me through the Venn diagram. <laughs> this is the most days of our lives soapy TV adventure ever. She has one son called Lorino, and she had this child while she was married to Lorenzo's father, Peter. Uh, her and Peter then got divorced. After her divorce from Peter, she then had a long-term relationship with, I'm going to say Dasho, D-A-C-H-O, Dasho? Yeah, cool, Dasho, okay. Dacho, whatever. Dacho. Yeah, she had a long-term relationship with Jacho, who is da, 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 Peter's eldest son. No. <gasps> she... After she divorced her husband, she went into a long-term relationship with her divorced husband's son. (gasps) But isn't that her son's brother? Yes. Yes. But she's not his mother. Like, obviously, Peter was married before. But if she marries him, Mm. then her son's stepfather will be his own brother. Well, they tried to marry uh, two times. No, no. Okay, forbidden. They had two weddings. Not no, two weddings scheduled. I'm taking points off. Both times, uh, the weddings did not go through, um, and they finally broke up in the year oh, 2010. Oh, thank God. Yes, oh, uh, I'm not one so- to judge. <laughs> said the boy who's always judging. Judging. <laughs> this is. Awful, 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 awful everything. And I don't want to talk about it anymore. So days of our lives. It's like, so weird. I know. He's not an identical twin, is he? 
Oh, oh. It's, mm, it's just so, bigger. like, they need to make a TV series about this. So Game of Thrones. Oh, it's awful. Let's move back to the story, <laughs> see if we can. <laughs> has that, has that ruined, can... you know, the, when she says Love Unlimited, let's just say she practices <laughs> what she preaches. <laughs> Because oh, she awful. will love any member of your family. Any no, I, member of your family. Oh, God, get it. Look, I actually, going back <laughs> to what we were talking about, I actually literally don't remember this song at all. Like, I'm glad 2G made the final because I don't remember this yeah. one. Yeah, it's not all. worth remembering. Yeah. Her outfit doesn't suit her at all, but I can see why someone who would sleep with her oh. ex-boyfriend's son would wear that. Well, I love the outfit. I think she I love looks her boots. like fantastic oh the boots mm. love them i'm a big whore for fireworks but they can't save this one i give them the song a three performance a four fashion a three and life choices <gasps> a negative ten thousand <laughs> <laughs> oh it's all right when you do it ignoring life choices that's a 10 uh, uh song i gave the two i give the performance one i actually gave the fashion a six because i say cougar is rocking it and you go sugar mama good grief with your outfit, not your lifestyle. That's that's weird. We um, do not <laughs> approve of sleeping with your ex-boyfriend's son, who happens yeah, to be your, your ex-husband's son. We're not doing this anymore. Move past it. Move past it. We'll get back into the into the cycle, and we'll never stop talking about it. 2013, <laughs> Elitza and Stoyan are back with the song "Samo Championly," only champions. Another non qualificationi um, Yeah. This one feels like a rehash of their 2007 entry. Oh my god, it's so is. It's so entry. is. Rinse and repeat. Mm. Rinse and I, repeat. Now, here's my thing. I don't know if it is intentionally, like, we'll try to make the same thing again, or do they just make very specific songs? Like, very, very particular lyrical, musical designs. Yeah, but even, even that way, like, you could... Um try to you know just do the different presentation i think mm. this is clearly a case of oh look it worked before um yes, you know they're I gonna try right. and recycle it but throw more shit at it basically they tried to do a dima balan i'm gonna come back a yeah. second time when i was so close and throw everything at it except to their everything was not that everything. Um, yeah. Oh, it was everything else that you forgot to bring. You should have brought that. That's what we like. Yeah, everything you, you could have just left in the car. Oh, my God. And again, <laughs> this comes back to our saying, we have said it. If you are going to call your song something like Only Champions, you, you need deliver. to make sure you're the champion or it's just embarrassing. Damn right. Yeah, I found that this one, it did not have the passion that was from 2007. The song is not as catchy. And uh, yeah, it just, I mean, it's, it's all over the place and it's just a real letdown because it's just, yeah, I don't know. Samey, samey. Why, why does that guy pop up at the end of the performance just holding that gigantic mask? Like, where oh, I was do not he know. the whole time? I know. <laughs> I know, I know. Sorry, I'm late. I've got the mask. Oh, is it too late to put it on? Sorry. Yeah, like, whoa. And you're like, yes. what is, what is what that got? To, it looked, it looked like, I, yeah, no. I just, totally, yeah, I totally agree with you. This is yeah. trying to capture lightning in a bottle, but again, yeah. Um, yeah. but yeah, not for me. I've given the song a three, performance a six, fashion a five for a total of 14. You know what I think that mask is? I think that mask is shit. We got 200 bucks left in the budget. What could we spend it on? Like, let's just, and they've run down to like an op shop. To an op shop. And, yeah. yeah. And just like, whoa, what? give us your most expensive thing for $200. And it was that, like, the op shop just went out the back and found some random piece of crap and just went, there you go. What up? Charge of $200. Is... They're desperate. What have you given this one? Look, I gave the song a five, I uh, give the performance a four, and I give the fashion a zero. Wow. For a total of nine. Yeah, Brings it was us up just, to a 23. Yeah, I just, yeah, I needed the passion that they had from before. And I just, yeah, it wasn't lacking. I agree with you 100%. Now, maybe it was so lacking that it 
made them sit down and reconsider their time at Eurovision because in 2014 they withdrew for quote financial reasons so maybe they didn't stop and think about it maybe they just ran out of cash it was that mask oh my god maybe like we're shitting on it maybe that mask was like twenty thousand dollars or something like it put Bulgaria into like debt that they've never recovered they got it on like a 30 day interest loan and they didn't pay it back yeah two years worth of debt yes because they did not come back in 2015 either for the same reason Reasons. Still paying off the bus. Still paying it off. But they did return to the contest in 2016 and started a bit of a success streak, shall we call it. Polly Geneva is back. Smurfette returns. Smurfette returns with the song If Love Was a Crime. And this one finished fourth. This sounds fresh. I definitely yeah. think this one is their most radio friendly song that they had ever oh, yeah. sent we'll get let's get into it a little more so polly is back she's got this one of those light up led outfits kind of well thing. you don't know it's light up at first it's just got That's like right. these little like you know just like it looks like oh they're just like you know white bars white marks just looks like she's wearing some safety gear um and then when that bit in the music changes Boom! She lights up like a Christmas tree. Do you do you think she has to bathe a small child after this? Because Polly needs a tiny loofah. Ooh, tiny loofah. Ooh, tiny loofah. <laughs> They'll never break us down. Ooh, tiny loofah. Tiny loofah. I don't know what she says, but my brain always sings tiny loofah. Tiny. I'll be your tiny loofah. <laughs> I you know I I absolutely love this song. It's such simple choreography as well. Like they've oh, taken oh, okay the quirky. You seem dance. to have opinions on it, so lay it on me, baby. Oh my god, no, I love it. Oh my god, like everything. The song is as catchy as heck. Like you just can't help but like get caught into it. Oh my god, it has the most ridiculous little dance that you can't help but doing at home. This is like, um, you know, it's just you can't. It's just these silly little bow bow, like knocky knock with your knees. I was sitting on my like in the study chair and I was doing it. I just I couldn't help yeah. it. Like it is. You so can't infectious. resist, can you? Yeah. I mean, this is Bulgaria raised up a level. At yes. this point, this is the best Bulgaria has ever been. Because I, I've i always said when it first started, I was like, oh, they're going to be lacking in the staging. But by the end of it, you're just like, oh, this is fantastic. I and love this. And one thing I thought about was that the 2016 stage in Stockholm was gigantic. Like it wasn't huge. Copenhagen. Yeah. We built a huge freaking like stadium in his shed yeah. and it's like the size yeah. of russia um this but the stockholm stage is really big and she manages to fill it even on her own before everyone else shows yes. up yes yes she manages to like whatever they've done with their light design or their camera angles they're killing it because she is amazing yeah. um yeah i love this song if you haven't heard it if you started listening to eurovision in 2017 we'll put it on facebook uh it is if love was a crime polly Geneva. i've given it Eights across the board. Eight for song, eight for performance, eight for fashion for a total of 24. Yeah, I, I love this. He, basically, whoever did this, Bulgaria needs to get back every year. And I think you were right. They've had the other problems before where they've just had one person on stage and they just have not filled the stage. And yeah, you're right. It's just It just feels like she's everywhere and you're just looking at her Um yeah, I love it, love it, love it. I gave the song a seven, performance seven, uh, fashion an eight. I love anything that lights up. That is a fantastic score for a total from the two of us of 46 Woo! out of uh, 60. 2016 gave me a Bulgaria. Did you need a tiny loofah? <laughs> tiny. tiny. Let's just call it what it is. Loofah. If Love Was a Crime would have been a great winner as well. Absolutely love it. Oh, yeah. Who won that year? Who won that year? Uh, Ukraine. Oh, with um, 1944? With Jamala and her bloody grandma. Anyway, uh, 2017, Christian Kostov with the song Beautiful Mess. And this one was a runner-up. It came second only to Portugal. And remember, Portugal did have the biggest winner uh, of all time, points-wise. I, I still don't get that Portugal win. I still don't. Because I remember looking into it, I'm like, oh, okay, so this is the song that came, you know, second to Bulgaria. 
And I watch this and I'm like, I want to know what was happening in the world in 2017. Because to be honest, I looked at this song and I don't understand why this song is se- is second. Like, yeah, agreed. I had completely forgotten this song. That's what was yeah. doing my head in. Because when they said it came second, I'm like, oh, usually you can at least, you know, remember the top performances. I could not remember this at all. Having, I know that I watched this Eurovision. I know that I watched this Eurovision. And even after I watched it, I still don't remember watching it before. It's I, it's weird. And I said this last week. It's weird that Portugal has the biggest winner ever in one of the blandest, most forgettable years of them all. I, yeah. I, I honestly can't remember the name of the Portuguese song. I can name every winner in history, but I cannot name the Portuguese. But back to Bulgaria, this one's a really well-crafted song, and he's got a great voice, but I I just don't care about this one, and it doesn't give me a reason to care about it. It's like, I like the stage and the screen effects, so you know where he Mm. gets the little, like, drawings around him. Mm. But was it enough to propel this song to second? I really don't think so. No, like if love was a crime had come second, um, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, I'm going to say it. I think if love was a crime was in 2017, it would have won. Really? Just because I, I just, I really don't like that. I don't like the 2017 winner at all. <laughs> yeah. I don't think anyone's particularly hyped about Portugal winning. I, it's weird to me that he looks like he's like five years old yet he's singing about how their love is unbreakable and I'm like what the fuck do you know about love buddy yeah like, it's, yeah, what do you it's love that... nap time what do you yeah. love snack time <laughs> <laughs> yeah I know yeah you're it's like yeah you you know you're two I it's like he's singing a love song to like mum's boobs like <laughs> that's that's who he's had the most human contact with Plot twist, he's going home with what's her name from 2012. <laughs> She's now dating him as well. Sophia, whatever her name was. Oh, really? No. Oh, okay. I thought. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> My jokes are wasted on you. <laughs> I thought you were talking about the young girl. <laughs> okay, sorry. Oh, my God. What I can tell you about him. Um, is that he revealed in a YouTube video in 2017, poor little Poppet um, is actually struggling with muscular dystrophy. Um, Aww. Yeah, which of course is a, you know, sort of degrading of the muscles. Obviously it can, it affects um, different people at different ages and it can affect you in, um, in, in different ways. Um, but yeah, and I was just like, oh, that's a bit, that's a bit, uh, depressing. So if that makes you sad, I don't know, maybe do something to support muscular dystrophy research. Yeah. Always yeah. be doing something for the right reasons. That's my philosophy. Absolutely. This one, I have to give it credit for production value. It was a, it was a mm. well-crafted song with a good performance, good singer, but it didn't touch me in any kind of emotional way. Still, Better than Portugal. I've given the song a seven, performance a six, fashion a six for a total of 19. Oh, wow. Okay. I gave the song a five, performance a five, fashion four. Um, obviously, even though, you know, he's never really dated a girl, he's, you know, <laughs> he was trying to convey emotion. Um, yeah. He's doing yeah, the best I he can th- for someone who has no idea what he's talking about. Yeah, pretty much. 2018 was Equinox with the song Bones. This was a much hyped supergroup on the back of Bulgaria's <laughs> good track. Um, it came 14th. Very drum and bass. Very drum and bass. Oh my God. You make me laugh when you describe it as a super bass. I would describe it as. I said super group, not super bass, Nicki Minaj. <laughs> Well, it, to me, it is uh, Theo Huxtable from The Cosby Show, a young Dunzel Washington, a chubby Adam Lambert, Sia, <laughs> and a fisherman. They are the Bulgarian <laughs> Avengers. That's what I thought when they were all wow. lined up together. I, that's, that's an interesting... That's I can actually picture everyone you're talking about as you say yes. it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, I'm just... Um, and I mean, with this song, like... Um, again, the recorded version is better than the live performance. 100%. Not all notes on the live performance are equal. Um, look, and I want to say, I want to hate this song and I do hate this song, but 
I also love this song simultaneously. Yes. I, I, it's kind of, it's a weird feeling to have. I think, and I think I'm in the exact same boat as you. I think it's a fantastic song, a great track, but it never lived up to the potential that Bulgaria kind of put out there. I think if they it was too done hyped. a whole different thing. Yeah. If the melody was different mm. over that track, you mm. absolutely could have had something gold there, but I don't really know where it went wrong for them. Yeah. It's again, it's one of those where I kind of, you know, I just sort of get the feeling, I don't know, sometimes you know, I said I, I have a reaction. And I'm like, oh look, you know, I, I like this song. I just don't feel it's a Eurovision song contest song. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. Totally agree with that. Yeah. It's almost like they went too to take themselves seriously to deliver like a like a radio friendly single and they almost overshot the mark. Yeah. 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 They they sort yeah. of went from oh we don't know what we're doing or like you know we don't have any staging and we don't have coordinated. Let's do all the coordinated stuff. Exactly. Yeah. They've definitely almost taken it too far. Um, but yes, that said, yes. I actually kind of really love this song. I've given the song an eight, performance a six, fashion a five, throw a total of 19. Oh, I, um, I pretty much just gave it four across the board. I was going to give the fashion um, higher, but it's just the random fisherman, like with his like, yeah. holy <laughs> jumper. And I'm just like, why? Who picked that? Like... Uh, like clearly his outfit was forgotten and that was just what was in the boot of the car that was going to be dropped off at the charity shop. They got it um, from the same op shop that they got that friggin' tiki they got mask, the mask or whatever from. it was. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe it got thrown in with the mask. It's just been sitting there being eaten by moths. Well, after their 14th place in 2018, they withdrew again for financial reasons, but had Aww. full intentions of coming back for 2020 with Victoria. If I may say so, it would have been a contender this year, but of course the contest didn't happen. So Victoria will be representing Bulgaria next year. Our winner for this week, Liz, is 2016's Ooh. Polly Genova with If Love Was a Crime, scoring a total of 46 oh, eh, out of 60. Oh, eh, eh, oh, eh, uh, I need a loofah, I need a loofah, woofah, ooh, ooh, da loofah. <laughs> do you have a comment of the week for us this week? Oh, and do I ever. Um, obviously for comment of the week, I think we all agree that there was only one act that we could look and comment upon. And it was, of course, 2009. I knew Krasima it. with Illusion. Um, okay, Void Music four years ago. Uh, straight to the point with a simple, guys, can we just pretend this never happened? <laughs> Glade photographer five years ago uh, simply put, Bulgaria doesn't deserve this awfulness. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and the real tricky five years ago uh, has made the observation that apparently the ability to hit the right tune is apparently not a requirement to gain access to this contest. Yeah, that's like that was like the first rule they wrote down for Eurovision. Like, where have you been? Yeah, I can't sing. Doesn't matter. Uh, Grand Duke Elios five years ago simply uh, put that the girls are like cats crying. <laughs> <laughs> Accurate uh, point. Jack Walker, <laughs> a little bit harsh. I'm just going to, it's a very long comment, so I'll just compress it. When he simply puts the parts at two minutes and nine seconds, two minutes and 17 seconds, two minutes and 32 seconds, two minutes and 52 seconds, legit gave me ear cancer. <laughs> <laughs> what? Jesus Christ. I, I spat tea. That is the harshest comment, I think, <laughs> ever. Um, so, multi super llama two years ago. Bulgaria have been killing it for the last three years. I think this was a very dark moment in history for them. And that gets comment of the week because you're right. I think illusion was the very darkest moment. 
in Bulgaria's wow. history. Wow, after all those mean comments before, I really thought you Except had a- for Lorraine. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. It's always got to be barbed some way, somehow. With you, you can never say anything fully nice. Hey, that brings us to the end of Bulgaria. Thank you so oh. much for joining me, Elizabeth. I, I, I'm feeling a little... Um... I don't know how I feel like about Bulgaria. We've seen hints of greatness. Um, I think they're on a path right now where they know mm. how to send a song that will do well. They just have to wait for the right year. You know, mm. keep sending mm. preparedness meets opportunity. That's my other that's my other saying. So keep sending you good stuff and hopefully it'll happen for you. But we mm. will be back next week with Drum roll, please. <gasps> Hang on. Croatia. Woo! Croatia are the next cab off the rank for us. If you don't follow us on um, Instagram and Facebook, please do. Do support podcast on both. Uh, Croatia will be a two-part episode, so we will do it over two weeks, uh, I think. Or maybe we'll do two episodes in one week. Depends how lazy we feel. Oh, we've been doing them like a Friday and a Tuesday. Is that what we're going to yeah, do? Yeah, that's probably what we're going to do. So next okay. week you will be getting one episode on Friday and then one the following Tuesday. Next Tuesday wait, 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 we wait, 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 wait. said there would be the interview with Null Point up on Tuesday, but I got sick, so it will be going up this coming Tuesday. So really, it's just double episodes for the next few weeks. Yeah. Woohoo! Oh my god. Yeah. And again, I am sorry to every race and nationality out there, and I apologize that you have to endure this now twice a week. I Do you apologize. know what we should give them as an apology? What? what? Uh, tiny loofah. Tiny, tiny loofah. Tiny loofah. Tiny loofah. Tiny loofah. Oh, you left me hanging. I'm going to say goodnight. Liz, would you like to take us out with a tiny loofah? <laughs> tiny loofah. Goodnight. Tiny loofah. Tiny loofah. In the rain, with the rain, getting a stain. <laughs> <laughs>